The fallout of Sean Diddy Combs' ongoing legal saga seemingly has been affecting the hip-hop mogul's businesses and business ventures, some companies even distancing themselves from Diddy prior to the federal raids on his L.A. and Miami homes. The fallout followed the slew of sexual assault allegations made against the rapper and producer, including his former girlfriend Cassie's now settled but explosive federal lawsuit against Diddy, where she accused the Bad Boy Records founder of physical abuse, rape, and forcing her to have sex with male sex workers. The suit was settled for an undisclosed amount within a single day of it being filed. But within the subsequent weeks, the rapper and producer would be embroiled in four other sexual misconduct lawsuits where Diddy faces allegations of harassment, battery, gang rape, as well as sex and drug trafficking. Diddy has maintained his innocence throughout the ongoing legal saga. But over the weekend, the producer and rapper posted this clip of his 1997 song, Victory, to his Instagram page. The video shows Diddy running from SWAT team members in riot gear with the caption, Bad Boy for Life. And recent photos of the mogul show what looks to be a carefree Diddy. After the raids, photos show the mega hitmaker enjoying a day on his reported personal dock, smoking and drinking. He also appeared all smiles, even flashing a peace sign while riding his bike. Diddy and his longtime friend Stephen Jordan, a.k.a. Stevie J, were also seen riding around in a golf cart amid the ongoing sex trafficking probe. But despite Diddy, a.k.a. Diddy Love's carefree demeanor, multiple brands and businesses apparently aren't showing the mogul the same love, as they've decided to distance themselves or fully cut ties. According to Variety, a reality show following Diddy's family was scrapped in its early stages of development at Hulu. The show was reportedly being developed with the working title Diddy Plus 7, which was produced by James Corden's production. Company. The series was supposed to follow the lives of Diddy and his seven children. In November, the Capital Preparatory School in Harlem, which is a public tuition-free charter school Diddy co-founded, cut ties. The school's co-founder and head of schools, Dr. Steve Perry, released a statement following their decision. The statement reads, quote, Following a comprehensive evaluation, a decision has been made to end the partnership between Capital Preparatory Schools and Sean Combs. While this decision was not made lightly, we firmly believe it is in the best interest of our organization's health and future. That news arrived soon after Diddy stepped down as chairman of Revolt TV, the TV network he co-founded in 2013. In a statement posted to the network's Instagram page, it read in part, quote, while Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, the decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all Black people through this country and the African diaspora. Our focus has always been one that reflects our commitment to the collective journey of revolt, one that is not driven by any individual, but by the shared efforts and values of our entire team on behalf of advocating, elevating, and championing our culture, and that continues. At the time it was reported Diddy's decision to step down as chairman was described as temporary and didn't appear to be a full resignation. That all appeared to change months later. According to a TMZ report, Diddy had sold off all of his shares of Revolt TV to an anonymous buyer for an undisclosed amount. The news was revealed shortly after the feds raided Diddy's homes. Selexco, who previously managed Diddy as an artist, no longer lists him as a client on their website. According to Billboard, Diddy hired the artist management company, which manages the likes of The Weeknd, Ty Dolla Sign, French Montana, and Brandy back in 2021. But at this time, it's unclear when Diddy was scrubbed from the website or if he was officially dropped as a client. Last July, Diddy announced he'd be launching Empower Global, which according to his team, was a curated immersive e-commerce platform that allows consumers to discover and buy products exclusively created and sold by black entrepreneurs. Diddy founded the company in 2021, after the company was launched, he told the Associated Press in an interview he wanted to create the Black Wall Street and felt passionate about building wealth within his community, even investing $20 million into the platform. But by the end of the year, nearly 20 companies terminated their partnership with the e-commerce platform, one company even telling Rolling Stone magazine they made the decision after Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy. According to entertainment attorney Mitra Ahorian, the brand's move to distance themselves from the mogul isn't surprising. I don't find it unusual and actually in my opinion the moves have been sort of mild um, there hasn't been huge announcements about you know dropping him from anything he is no longer on his you know management rosters website um, he stepped down from revolt tv and sort of quietly sold all his shares but they issued a very you know sort of mild statement about protecting um, you know their 
objective and the purpose of you know of of the station and not distracting with these other things that are going on so that was kind of this this you know fair understandable statement um one that kind of broke my heart a little bit was the school in harlem the charter school that he had started to find that he founded really um distance themselves from him and sort of you know cut off that relationship which as a school you have to you have an obligation to the to the kids and um but you know that was it, it's kind of interesting because the businesses that he's been tied to and the ones that are distancing um himself from him themselves from him are all kind of doing good in the world and that's something that i found very interesting you know like for example um the uh, Empower Global, the sort of the black marketplace that he started, that's sort of the Amazon for black businesses. A lot of businesses are removing themselves from that platform, um, which is unfortunate. You know, that was some good. So I, I was just surprised there were some things that he's doing out in the world that I wasn't aware of that I'm finding out about now. And, um, and I find that kind of interesting. But just, you know, they're definitely... Uh, a lot of movement away from him now and also him stepping down. According to new reports, the allegations are also affecting the rapper and the producer's radio spins. According to Billboard, prior to Cassie's lawsuit being filed against Diddy, his expansive catalog generated 11,000 radio spins, which translates to 23.3 million radio airplay impressions. But within just two weeks of Cassie filing her lawsuit, his radio spins declined 28 percent and impressions were down 26 percent. And in the months following, radio stations have reportedly been playing his expansive catalog less and less. The report explains from March 15th through the 28th, only 1,000 radio spins were generated, which garnered 4 million impressions, a significant plummet compared to the weeks leading up to Cassie's filing. But the interesting thing is the streaming numbers have actually gone up. So even though people are, you know, they have less, less access to what's playing on the radio now, um, they're actually streaming more which arguably is more revenue for him and his artists. Um, but that's, that's, I found to be sort of an interesting trend because of course people are like, you know, the people that know Diddy are revisiting his songs and the people who might be, you know, maybe didn't grow up with him or aren't as familiar with all of his songs are probably looking him up now. Like what, you know, what is the big deal and all the people that are tied to him. Um, so it isn't, it is a very interesting trend and I think it's one to pay attention to for sure. But despite not officially being charged with a crime, is there a way Diddy can recover his public image or even his business endeavors? Mitra Ahorian explains that remains unclear. The business deals I don't know about, the public image, you know, anything can happen. Um, and I think it's very much going to turn on the federal investigation. Um, we, you know, we didn't get a lot of what happened in the Cassie lawsuit because it didn't go through to the discovery phase. We have yet to see what's going to go on with the others and whether they'll settle or whether more things will become public by virtue of a public proceeding. Um, the federal investigation, that's going to be interesting because that's not lawyers against one another. That's the government who, you know, is, is vigorously looking, you know, cannot make moves without having probable cause and having, you know, evidence and, you know, to be able to charge and things like that. So I think, you know, people sometimes, you know, don't give as much weight to a civil lawsuit because they know this, you know, that people are often after celebrities and after money. So there's, you know, there's, there's an element of that where you take things with a grain of salt. Um, but, you know, but with the federal government investigating, that's definitely something that the public is going to take far more seriously. But in light of the ongoing allegations against Diddy, is the music industry finally coming to a Me Too reckoning? Ahorian says, possibly. Maybe, um, you know, it feels, <laughs> you know, I say this again and again, working in entertainment, um, you know, the music industry has historically been sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Right. And in the case of hip hop, there's other, you know, parallels to that. But we sort of expect this of our musicians. We sort of expect this from, oh, we glorify them and, you know, they, they can do no wrong. It's understood they're going to have, you know, a lot of girls around. That's, you know, that's the lifestyle. They're going to have, you know, a lot of maybe, you know, girls of all ages, let's say, um, who are fascinated by celebrity and unfortunately sometimes get taken advantage of. But I think that, you know, the public sort of, you know, if they don't know what's going on behind closed doors, it's very easy to turn a blind eye 
to what we sort of dismiss as a lifestyle um, that is very far from the lifestyle that you and I might have, but something that is also glorified in the music and the videos and, and all of that. So I don't know that it's necessarily the me too of the music industry. It is definitely the me too of Diddy and his empire. Um, because so much is going to be coming out. There's been so many rumors over the years that are finally sort of coming to light with um, not only the, the allegations from these young women, but also we now have this, uh, what we saw was a very dramatic federal raid, right? They came in with SWAT. They came in with military gear and everyone was like, whoa, what's going on over there? What could this possibly be? And it's Homeland Security. And it's, you know, um, I, I heard about it on the press before I even saw it. So I knew it was happening, even though it's down the street from where I live. I knew it was happening. So it's kind of also very interesting how quickly it was publicized. But I think on the heels of that, you now have, have everyone's attention of you know wanting to know okay what happened here because this is serious so this isn't you know uh women allegations against bill cosby this isn't allegations against harvey weinstein weinstein it's still big it's very big it's one of our you know huge celebrities but it's a little different it has this twist of like oh sex trafficking it has kind of the jeffrey epstein that everyone's been you know, fascinated and disturbed by. Um, and it has this, you know, this potential for weapons charges and things like that. Like, why did they go in with such heavy artillery? And so aggressively, they thought that they're, you know, they had information that there was going to be weapons in there. So there's another element that I think we haven't seen. So yes, there's a Me Too, but there's also a there's a, there's some other criminal things that we might, you know, that might be coming to light now. And it's not just businesses and brands who have been distancing themselves from Diddy amid the sex trafficking probe. Several celebrities have remained publicly quiet during his legal saga. However, two celebrities have notably come forward expressing their support for Diddy. Disgraced singer R. Kelly, who was serving a decades-long prison sentence for child pornography and enticing minors, questioned the validity of the sex trafficking allegations. Meanwhile, Diddy's longtime friend, Stevie J, who was in Diddy's Miami mansion when the feds raided the home, defended his friend, telling a news reporter with Fox 5 New York this week Diddy would never break the law and referred to the ongoing probe as a crucifixion of a black legend. He recently posted this clip onto his Instagram page, which was a video from Diddy's 50th birthday party from 2019, with the caption, this is what a real Diddy party looks like. The video shows famous names such as Jay-Z and Pharrell, Kanye West, Kylie Jenner, Kim and Khloe Kardashian, Naomi Campbell, and other famous faces. But all have remained publicly quiet amidst Diddy's legal saga. I gotta say that I noticed that, definitely noticed that. And I was like, there are a lot of people not saying anything. And when something like this happens, Oftentimes you will see friends, you know, sticking up for someone they know or colleagues saying, no, that's outside his, his character. That would never happen. I stand behind him. None of that happened. Diddy has not been criminally charged on any of the allegations against him. Ahorian explains while that is still up in the air, the charges could be dependent on what the feds found during the raids. I think it's going to come down to the evidence of what's on those laptops and once what's in the phones. And, you know, we have to also consider this is this is decades in the making. Right. So these lawsuits weren't brought from incidents that happened recently, thanks to the statute of limitations being extended and actually extended from five years to 20 years. Right. So that's a long time. And that's a long time for, um, you know, the possibility of evidence having been destroyed. Um, and, you know, there were I don't know how often your phone gets, you know, <laughs> uploaded and, and things disappear and all that. But like, you know, people don't necessarily keep photos, videos for um, for decades um, and also on what phones. And, you know, there's some technology that's changed and all of that. And laptops, people, you know, get different. So they're really this is going to take some time and this is going to be it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, the job of going through whatever they did discover in the homes and the job of interviewing all the people that are supposedly um, witnesses to some of the events that may have occurred. This is a lengthy and in-depth process. This is not something that the feds are going to be taking taken lightly. So we're not going to know yet. My personal opinion, just living in Los Angeles, working in Hollywood and 
you know, growing up out here and having friends who have ties to, you know, Diddy or, you know, worked for him or worked for with him or just anyone really involved in the music industry, there's always been stories um, and sort of rumors and, and really detailed individual stories. You know, I've heard stuff along the way as well, like, oh, Diddy, okay. Um, and so I do think there's something there, whether the evidence will point to that and whether they can actually establish it is another question. Throughout all the allegations against Diddy, he has remained steadfast that he's innocent. After the raids, his attorney issued a statement reading in part, Mr. Combs was not detained and spoke to authorities. Neither he nor any of his family members were arrested, nor has their travel been restricted. Diddy's attorney called the raids an unprecedented ambush, which led to a premature rush of judgment and that it's nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability, and Mr. Combs will fight every single day to clear his name. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.